Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar on getting started with MotiveWave. This webinar is aimed at new users who are looking to get up to speed as soon as possible. The topics we will cover today are sign up and download, installation, startup options, workspaces, menus, charts and layouts, instruments, and untitled versus title analysis. So this will be a fairly high level overview, uh, but I will be showing you some things that new users may have issues with. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to attend. Today's presentation will be approximately 30 to 45 minutes. There will be a Q&A section at the end of the presentation, and we will answer a few questions as we go. Uh, there should be a Q&A button at the bottom of Zoom where you'll be able to type in your questions. The webinar recording will be posted within 48 hours to the video tutorials section on our website. If you're watching this webinar on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. Before we get into the content, I just have to go over a quick disclaimer. There is substantial risk of loss in trading commodity futures, options, stocks, equities, indices, cryptocurrencies, and foreign exchange products. Futures and options trading has large potential reward, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of these risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the markets. Please don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. So we've also posted CFTC rule 4.41 for you to read. MotiveWave has a free 14-day trial. Uh, you can sign up at MotiveWave.com. So this segues into the main content of the webinar, uh, which is the sign up and download section. In order to use MotiveWave, you will need to sign up for our free 14-day trial. You can do this from our website. So let's head there now. Um, in order to sign up for this free trial, just click the free trial link up at the top. And you'll need to enter your name and email address, read and agree to our terms of service and privacy policy, and then click this green button to submit your information. You'll then be emailed a license key. This email may end up in your spam folder, so be sure to check there as well. So now that we have our license key, let's download MotiveWave. Uh, we can do so by clicking the download link at the top. Depending on your operating system, you'll either need to select Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. So I've previously downloaded MotiveWave, so I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. And I'm just going to open the installer now. So we can quickly run through the installer. It's pretty basic and standard. We're going to install to our C drive. We're going to select a start menu. And we're also going to create a desktop shortcut. So let's go ahead and install. It's a pretty quick process. We can see our MotiveWave icon there. We're not going to view the README. And let's go ahead and launch. So we can quickly go through the wizard here. It's just going to say that we're, we have to uh, agree to the license here. So we'll click Next. And we want to read and agree to the license agreement, which we agree to. And here, we're going to be asked to enter our license key that was emailed to us. So it's best to copy and paste the license key directly from your email uh, so you don't make a mistake. So what I'm going to do is just pause my screen. I'm going to copy my license key. It's highly secretive. I'm going to click the Next button. Um, it's going to activate my license. And I'm just going to resume my screen now. And you can see it's going to ask us to create our first workspace. Um, so for this webinar, I'm just going to call this workspace webinar. Um, and we have two choices for our workspace location. We can save it to the MotiveWave cloud, which is hosted on MotiveWave servers and can be accessed by any computer using the same license key. This would be useful if you plan to use MotiveWave on multiple computers or if you'd like to uh, the workspace is synced and updated on each computer. Uh, the other choice is your local disk. This is best if you just plan to use MotiveWave on a single computer. This is what I'm doing here today, so I'm just going to set mine to local. 
and then click next. So this dialogue here is just showing us that some of the connections we have available have demo accounts. So all we have to do is go to the bottom and click OK to bypass this dialogue. Each workspace in MotiveWave must have at least one connection tied to it. Uh, so we need to select a broker or data feed from the drop down menu. We can see the full list here. Uh, for this demo, I'm just going to be using the free Google Yahoo connection. And as you can see, we have a disclaimer that pops up that this connection is for demo purposes only. We don't recommend you use it for trading. And then we can click finish. Just a quick note about data. MotiveWave doesn't provide data. So you will need to connect to a supported broker or data feed. Some of the data connections will offer a free trial as well. So we can go to our website and under connections, uh, you'll be able to see all the available connections listed. And if you're wondering uh, which connections have free or trial, we can go up into the help over to the documentation. And under the knowledge base, we have a getting started article called free Do uh, data sources. And we have just a quick list here with a few links. Okay, so this is the startup slash screen that you'll be greeted to uh, when you start MotiveWave. Let's take a look at the options available to us in the options menu. So first option is workspaces. Uh, here we can modify, remove, arrange the order in which they're listed, or create a brand new workspace. The license option will allow you to change your license key. The appearance will let you set your window theme. So this can be either dark or light. And you can also set your general font and icon size. The advanced dialog uh, can let you set the maximum amount of RAM that MotiveWave can reserve. By default, MotiveWave will set the reserve to a maximum of one quarter of your system memory. The VM args below is for advanced uses only. Please do not enter anything into this field or MotiveWave may not start and you'll need to reinstall. The auto update will just allow you to select the interval that MotiveWave checks for updates. The log files will open the folder that our log files are located. Uh, this is something that may be requested of you if you have a support issue. MotiveWave will create a new log file each time it is started. And by default, it will only keep the last 20 files. And the about dialog will show our license key, our name, registered email address, license type, edition, and version that you're running. So before we open the workspace uh, we, we just created, I just want to touch on different editions of MotiveWave. Uh, for the purposes of this webinar, I will be using the Ultimate Edition. And by default, all free trial users will be on the Ultimate Edition as well. Some of the features mentioned today may only be available in specific editions. So I'll try to mention if that's the case. Uh, in regards to workspaces, the professional and ultimate editions are able to add multiple broker connections to a single workspace. So this could be done when you create the workspace initially or by modifying a workspace at a later date and adding the other connection. The lower editions, uh, such as standard and order flow, will only be able to connect to one broker per workspace. So we're now ready to open our workspace. We can do this by selecting the workspace name from the drop, drop down menu here. We only have one, which is called webinar, and selecting the continue button below. And MotiveWave will open this workspace. Uh, if you have a connection that requires a login and password, which is almost all the connections, you will be prompted to enter your login details here. These login details would come from your broker or data feed. We don't have access to these. And as a side note, uh, you can open multiple workspaces at the same time by launching multiple instances of MotiveWave. In Windows, this is uh, actually quite easy. You just double click your application shortcut again right here. In Mac OS, it's a little more difficult. So you'll need to open the terminal application and then enter the following command. So you'd enter open space dash N space dash A space MotiveWave and hit your enter key and that should launch another instance of MotiveWave. So let's select continue. And since I have Google Yahoo, I'm not prompted for any login details. Um, 
now that we're in Motive Wave, we can maximize the console by selecting this button. On Windows, this will maximize the console and cover your Windows taskbar. Um, if, you, if you'd like to see your taskbar, you can go into the Configure, Preferences menu, and enable the Use Native Windows mode. As you can see by our error, we have to restart for this to take effect. So we're going to select OK, and we're actually going to quickly restart Motive Wave so we can see what that looks like. And now you can see that we are able to view our Windows taskbar. Um, and as you can see, we do load a default workspace that is full of charts and instruments. Uh, we, we do this so that new users can get up and running right away without trying to figure out how to open up a chart or how to add an instrument. And now that we're in Motive Wave, we can take a quick look through the menus at some of the important items. So in the file menu, we have a backup option. Um, so this will create a manual workspace backup. Uh, so this will save all your settings, all your analysis, et cetera. Uh, the option below will restore. So you could use this function to restore the workspace backup that you just created. And by default, MotiveWave will automatically backup your workspace on shutdown and will keep the last 10 backups. So if you'd like to see uh, the folder location of these backups, go into the Configure Preferences menu, which is actually also available from this gear icon here. Go into General and backups. And you can see my location is set to C users, JSON, Motive Wave backup. Uh, the view menu has quite a few options. Components will open up the components panel. So the, the, this is where you'll find most of the drawing tools. Um, the object viewer right here will open up the object viewer, which shows all the studies and drawings on that particular chart. So you'd select the chart you wanted and then select view object viewer to display the object viewer. You can also see that we have a shortcut here, which is alt plus V. And in this object viewer, you can double click a study or drawing to open up its settings. You could make any changes you wanted to. You could lock it, hide it, or delete it from here. Uh, another popular option is the lock studies. So by default, MotiveWave ties the studies to the instrument. Uh, so if you switched instruments in your chart, the studies wouldn't carry over. Enabling this option will allow studies to stick while you cycle through various instruments. So for example, we have an SMA on Apple. And if I went ahead and loaded up Amazon, the SMA doesn't appear there. Uh, that's because we didn't have lock studies on. So if we go back to Apple, we go to view and enable the lock studies feature. We can go back to Amazon and we can see it has that same study loaded in the chart. So I will just disable this for now. Uh, the study menu will show uh, studies in various different groups. Uh, but these are not all the studies. If you want to see all the studies, you need to click the All Studies button here. And then you can see a dialog pops up with all the studies, which you can search for. So if you wanted the volume imprint study, you could just search for imprint and find the study there. The strategy menu is uh, very similar to the study menu, except that it's used for automated strategies instead of studies. The configure menu, you can go into workspaces to modify, remove, arrange, and create a new workspace. Uh, we discussed this earlier. Um, next in line is the configure instruments dialog. Uh, so this will allow you to view all the instruments that are currently loaded in your workspace. You can also define a new instrument here. So this can be used to add an instrument that you know exists with your broker, but may not show up in the instrument search. The custom button, which is not available in all editions, will allow you to create a custom instrument. So it could be a spread instrument, a ratio instrument, or an index. Um, you can also delete an instrument from your workspace, uh, but be careful when deleting instruments. 
If you do, it will delete the instrument along with all the analysis you have and any open charts with that symbol will be removed from your workspace. So if you do accidentally delete an instrument you didn't mean to, you can always restore a previous workspace backup. The active tickers uh, will show all the instruments that are currently subscribed to receive market data. Uh, this is useful as many brokers limit the amount of active ticker, tick, excuse me, tickers that you can have at one time. An active ticker would be any open chart, position, or watch list item. You can't delete an active ticker from this dialog. Uh, you would need to remove uh, the watch list items or charts manually. The preferences menu uh, will be all your workspace preferences. So you can think of this as your global preferences. And some of these items can be overwritten on an instrument or chart level. This menu could have a, a video all on its own. So I'm just going to touch on a few options here. The general simulated account uh, can be used to enable an internal SIM account for practice trading. Selecting the SIM trade only option will uh, not allow trades to be sent to your broker. So this is nice to have if you, uh, so you don't accidentally select your broker account instead of the SIM account uh, when you're placing a trade. The theme can be used to set your chart and bar theme colors. In the chart chart settings, we have an important setting called the max days tick charts. Uh, so this will limit the charts that use tick data to 10 days by default, but as you can see, you can increase this number. The bar size selector uh, will be the bar sizes that are shown at the bottom of each chart. So I just move this over, you can see all these bar sizes here. What we can do is select the one minute, we could remove it click apply, and then that one minute is removed from the bar size selector. The toolbar menu can be used to customize your toolbars. So you could select the top toolbar here and you can add or remove items as you see fit. Uh, you can also en enable the another top uh, toolbar, bottom, left, and right toolbar. The historical data tab, is used to set uh, a global default for the bar build method. So this is the time at which your bars will start building. For example, our hourly bars uh, in this instance would start at 9 a.m. and go to 10 a.m. But if we prefer our hourly bars to be built from 9.30 to 10.30, 10.30 to 11.30 and so on, we can change this to 9.30. So this can also be set on a per instrument basis uh, you can do this by right-clicking the chart, selecting Edit Instrument, and it's on the Intraday Bars tab. Okay, Joe, so now that we're a few minutes in, do we have any quick questions related to the content so far? Um, thank you, Jason. Yep, I answered a few of them. I have some here. Um, we have a question here from Alex. May, may I increase the Motive Wave Ultimate supported RAM to 128 gigabytes manually? Can it support higher RAM? For example, 256 gigs or 512 gigs? So uh, yeah, um, that's a really good question. We've never had a system with that much RAM uh, for testing purposes. So I don't know if we have a hard limit on that, but we're talking about the advanced section here. You could just uncheck use default and enter in the maximum amount you'd, you'd want. So as mentioned by default, it's set to one quarter of your system memory, but you can increase it. Uh, if you email support, we can probably find out for you, maybe do some tests, but we don't have a system with 128 gigs to do that testing, but we can, we can probably figure that out. Okay. Um, we got a question here from Michael. How can I define a default symbol for every start or new page? Uh, how can I define a new symbol? I'm not a default sure. symbol, a default symbol. Um, we could probably, I guess, if you click on the plus um, tab, Jason, chart. So now see how it's defaulted to Amazon. I guess he's asking, 
can he always have that as a default symbol showing up? Okay. Um, I guess one way to answer that is if you already have a chart with that specific symbol, you'll notice that when you open up a new chart, it automatically put that same symbol at the top. Yeah. So for instance, if Microsoft is selected, then Microsoft will show at the top. Yeah, we'd use Microsoft there. again. If we go back to Amazon, click new, Yeah, uh, it's going to select Amazon. But other than that, I don't think we have any other way of setting that. No, no, there isn't. Okay, so there's an option for you. Um, let's see what we have. We have a question here from Ali. For the trade panel, how do we break even after a certain amount of picks? Um, so that would be more exit strategy related. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to be getting into really executions or trades in this webinar. It's going to be a fairly high level overview. But yeah, just to quickly let you know, it would be in the exit strategies here. Um, you'd need to edit an exit strategy. And then you have a break even that you can set so you can enable this. After 10 ticks in profit, it's going to move your stop up to break even. And this little offset number here is you could do a plus one offset, which would uh, move your stop to break even plus one tick uh, so that you could use that to cover commissions. Okay. We have a question here from Ali. The stock list, uh, I guess he's asking for free sources for stock data. Uh, can, go ahead, Joe. I guess we can point him to the um, the docs where the free sources are. Yeah. One being Google. Yeah. yeah. See, does stock list data feed are free? I guess he's asking, is there free? Yeah. Uh, stock data feeds, so we can yeah the so free data the sources. Docs, we we do have a few data sources. The Google Yahoo is free, um, but not recommended trade off of. And then a lot of the Forex guys are offer free data. And then you have free trials. You can use IQ feed, bar chart, CQG, Rhythmic has a free trial as well. Okay, let's see if we got more. Um, Terry, will this be recorded to view later as well? Yes. Yeah. Within 48 hours. Um, next. Okay, we have a question here from Tim. I tried to link a few charts with different time frames to one instrument, but they acted independently of each other. Can you please demonstrate how to link charts of the same instrument? Link charts of the same instrument. So I guess what, okay. So maybe we can bring up, um, maybe if, yeah. We'll do that. And we'll do so, that. I assume this is what you mean. If you want to link these two charts to the same instrument, you would give them the same link color. So you can find the link color up here. Let's give it Amazon or these two charts a red color. And then now these two charts are going to be tied using the uh, same instrument. So if we switch this over to Intel, they would both switch. I don't know if that's what. Uh, the user's referring to? That's the way I interpret it. Um, but I'll tell you what, Tim, if, if that's not what you meant, maybe you can uh, email us at support at motorwave.com with further details. We'd be more than happy to, um, to answer that for you. Um, what are the questions? I see one right here. How to open another instant instance in Linux. I'm actually not aware of that, where to have, of how to do that. I think it's more like Windows where you can, I, I could be wrong since I don't use Linux all the time, um, but we may have to Google that. Should be pretty easy to Google that. Uh, unless you know, Joe, are you aware of that? No. Yeah. No. Um. We have one here from Mike. I'm not sure what you mean here. Mike has the work through, maybe means walk through on downloading the platform been provided yet. Uh, I would say yes. Um, you'll see that in the recording when it's released, uh, but you can simply just go to our website under the download, download either the Windows or the Mac 
or the Linux file, and then go ahead and uh, double click it to get it installed. Let's see what else we have. Oh, we have a question here on how to get the manual on Motive Wave. So maybe we can show them where the uh, online docs are for that one. Yeah. So you can find it just by going to our website here under help, just click documentation. And then you can see our user guide here, uh, various other guides, our knowledge base articles, video tutorials, et cetera. Okay, um, maybe we'll get one more. Okay. Let's see. What are the ideal system requirements? Um, that would be the documentation, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, we do have in the docs, I think it's there. In support, we have minimum system requirements, <clears throat> which are Windows 7 and higher, Mac OS 10, 12, 6 and higher, and Linux Ubuntu 18.4 and higher. Absolutely have to be 64-bit operating system. Graphics card, uh, you know, built-in graphics cards work as well. They share memory with your regular system memory, so that's fine. Four gigs of memory is minimum. We really recommend eight. <laughs> I think four is really, really tight. So I'd definitely be going with at least eight. And then one uh, gigabyte of free disk space. But if you're storing tick data, I mean, you're gonna need a lot more than one gigabyte. We're, you know, you, you could see your, your uh, historical tick data getting up into the 20, 30 gigabytes in some instances. Okay. All right, so we'll move, move on. on from now. Yep. Okay, thanks, Joe. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so uh, let's dive into the charts and layouts. So we're just gonna take a quick look around the MotorWave console. We have chart tabs or panels here. Uh, and we have a watch list panel down here in an orders panel over to the bottom right. Um, these panels can be added by clicking the plus icon next to an existing chart tab or next to an existing panel. And then as you can see, we showed you this before, but you could add a chart, watch list, DOM, order book, um, any other panel we have available could be added. Um, so, at the bottom of the console, we have what, what we call pages. So the home, charts, floating account, et cetera. Uh, these are all pages. Uh, you can use these pages to separate your workspace however you see fit. New pages can be added by clicking this little pl plus icon here uh, next to the last uh, page in the list. So we can do that now. We could create, uh, let's say, a new page called ETFs. So you, you give it a page name. Uh, you select the type, so we can just going to do chart and then select a pre existing layout. So we could just do this, select OK, and now we have a new page. So if you want to move or reorganize them, you can just click and drag. If you want to remove them, just right click them and select close, and you will thankfully get a warning. So in MotiveWave, uh, there are actually two types of layouts. So we have the docking framework here and the floating layout, which we'll touch on in just a sec. Um, so with the docking framework, uh, you can move your mouse between two panels until you see the double arrow pointer. So it may be kind of hard for you guys to see, but my arrow pointer has turned into a double arrow. And now I can click and drag to resize these panels um, however I like. Uh, you can do vertical and horizontal separations. Um, <clears throat> so you can also add or move panels to different positions. Uh, to do this, you can just click and drag the panel tab at the top here uh, to the location you want. In the panel location where it'll end up will show as a blue highlight. Um, 
So I'm just going to take this Intel chart. And if I wanted to, let's say, add another chart right here next to my orders tab, I would click and drag this panel over here. And you can see where it turns blue. I could, I could put it to the left of the orders tab, to the right, above, below, or in the middle where it highlights all in blue, that would go alongside the orders positions accounts. So let's throw it to the right side of the orders tab here. And as you can see, you could resize these any way you want. You can move them anywhere you want within the docking framework. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty uh, easy to create a custom layout without a whole lot of work. And the second layout type is the floating layout. So these panels, which are called stations, uh, can float freely anywhere on the page and aren't linked to the sides of other stations. So these panels will not resize if you change the size of the console window like they do with the drop, uh, excuse me, the docking framework. Um, so as you can see, I can move these, I can resize them, I can place them over top of any others. Um, uh, so, so that's pretty handy. If you'd like to actually add a new station, what you can do is right click the background, select new station, and then select the station you want to see. So you could select a DOM and open up a DOM panel. Since we're on Google Yahoo, this is uh, not gonna be very useful. Um, if we go into the configure preferences menu, go to general and then dock, we can turn the snap to grid on or off and the grid spacing. So if we wanted to change this to 10, we could do that and our spacing gets a little tighter. So we could use that to, you know, align all of our charts uh, however we want. <clears throat> so with the floating layout type, it will allow you to create a really highly uh, customized layout, but it takes a little bit of work to get it going up front. So let's uh, check out some other areas of the console window. So <clears throat> up at the top, we have our top toolbar, which can also be modified by going into the configure preferences toolbar menu. We mentioned that earlier. Um, on the left side of the toolbar, we have our instrument dropdown list uh, in instrument search. Um, so we're going to touch on these a little bit later, the analysis buttons, which we'll also touch on later. Uh, the save as image button. So if you click this, you can uh, save a screenshot of the currently selected chart. Undo and redo buttons. Uh, the auto analyze button. So this is for Elliott Wave, which is only available in the Ultimate and LUA Light Editions. The create alert button. Our tools drop down. Uh, menu, which can be used to add various drawings, text, or tools to the chart. We have a bar type drop down, which can be used to show candles, OHLC bars, Heikinashi, line, or no bars at all. The no bars option is useful if you have a study like the volume imprint chart and you want to display just a footprint chart uh, without the candle in the background getting in the way. Uh, we can enable or disable the crosshair from this button right here. And then we have the auto scale button. So this button will return your chart back to auto scale if you have changed the chart scaling method. Uh, chart linking as we showed a little bit earlier. So you can use this to link certain charts together so they can display either the same instrument or the exact same bar size. This can be set in the configure preferences menu under general linking. And you can see we can link by instrument or link by bar size, and each color can be set independently. Uh, next to that, we have the bar size dropdown. So this is where you could select the bar size of a chart. So you first select the chart and then select the bar size for it, and it'll change that specific chart. Uh, to the right of that, we have our options which are disabled now. Uh, they will be enabled if you had a drawing in your chart, any drawing that you would be able to change the color, line type, or thickness. So in the top right of the console, in the top right of the console, excuse me, we have the lock studies right here, which we went over earlier. Um, so this will allow you to lock the studies of the chart, even if you change the symbol. 
Next to that, we have the show orders button, which will uh, show or hide the executed order lines on the chart. This tool icon here uh, will show the components panel. Um, the button next to it will show the replay mode. So you can see the replay mode at the bottom. We can enable or disable that. The next items will show or hide the uh, DOM panel, order book, time and sales, or trade panel. So these panels will all be attached to the chart that you have selected when you click the button. So if I selected this chart over here, I can enable the DOM or the trade panel. And same for if I have this one selected. And obviously the last button here, as we mentioned earlier, this is the preferences menu. In the bottom left corner, uh, you'll see a little Wi-Fi symbol right here. This is your connection indicator. If you have multiple connections in your workspace, uh, there will be a symbol for each connection. Uh, you can hover your mouse over top and it's gonna display, let me do that here. So it's gonna display the connection name and the status. If a symbol is white, that means you're connected. If the symbol has turned yellow or amble, excuse me, amber, that means you're disconnected. Uh, you can actually double click the little Wi-Fi symbol itself to manually disconnect and reconnect that particular connection. And next to that, we have just a little quick selection for linking and unlinking your charts. In the bottom right corner, we have the date and time. Uh, this info is taken from your computer clock. It's not actually coming from your broker connection. The gauge to the left of that is a memory gauge. So this is going to show the amount of memory that Java is using. So right now we're using 289 megs and the amount of memory uh, Java has reserved. So it's reserved at this moment, 512 megs. Little trash icon next to it uh, will run the garbage collector. So what this will do is it'll just try to free up some memory being used. Um, but don't worry, this is done automatically in the background as well. So you wouldn't normally need to, to use this function. All right, so let's move on to the instruments. Uh, by default, MotiveWave will load a list of in instruments into your workspace just to get you up and running quickly. This list will depend on the broker or data feed that you're connected to. If you're wondering what connection supports which asset, asset classes, uh, you can go over to our website on the, on the connections page. So let's just jump over there now. And you can see the connections are listed along with the asset classes they support. We'll move out of that. In the configure instruments menu, uh, we can see a list of instruments that are loaded into our workspace. So as mentioned earlier, we can define a new instrument, we can create a custom instrument, we can delete an instrument. Um, let's say we, I don't know, we're taking a look through our instruments and maybe we decide that uh, we don't want ASX instruments. Uh, sorry uh, to our Australian viewers, uh, hopefully they're still asleep. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all the ASX instruments. So in order to do this, I can select the first ASX instrument in the list and scroll all the way down to the bottom to the last entry, we'll find it here. And if I hold down the shift key and click my left mouse button, it's going to select uh, everything in between. So we can now go ahead and just delete all these instruments. And now they're all gone and our instruments are a little more tidy. And just a quick note on symbology, MotiveWave uses the native symbology for each connection. For example, on Rhythmic, in Interactive Brokers, the S&P E-mini futures current front month symbol right now would be ESZ1. But on CQG, the symbol would actually be EPZ21. So you really need to be aware of your specific connection symbology. And if the instrument you want is not currently loaded into the workspace, you can add it by searching. So this is done by, first of all, selecting the chart that you want uh, this new instrument to go into, and then selecting this magnifying glass icon. Uh, this will search the specific broker or data feed API for that instrument. If you have more than one connection in your workspace, it will be shown at the top here as another tab. Um, 
you just want to make sure that you search the correct tab. So if you wanted, if we had Google and Interactive Brokers, you'd want to make sure that you are selected on the Interactive Brokers one if you want to find an IB symbol. Um, so uh, actually, let's uh, do a quick test just to show. So let's say I wanted to find Tesla. I can search for the symbol here, click search. And then as you can see, we'll be returned a few results. So we definitely want the NASDAQ one. So we can just double click that and Tesla will, will be brought into our workspace and we can actually find it now by searching for Tesla in our manage instruments dialog. And we can see that we have Tesla in the workspace. Um, you can also search for a new instrument when you're opening a new chart. So you can click the plus icon next to a chart select chart, and then you can click the little mini magnifying glass here uh, to open up the search menu. So the symbol drop down menu uh, over here uh, will list all the instruments that are in your workspace. Uh, you can search for and add new instruments by manually typing the symbol in this box, although we do not recommend this, as you're not able to select which connection to search, and you're also not able to select which exchange to search on. Uh, so there's a good chance you're gonna end up with the wrong instrument. If you find this list a little unwieldy, you can actually go into the configure preferences, general, quick search, uncheck show all instruments, and then you can type in the instrument name here, hit enter, and only have a few instruments that you're interested in show up in that uh, menu there. Okay, Joe, do we have any more questions? Um, we have a few here. Okay. Can I have a, I have a question here from Keith. Can I have a chart for Globex and cash sessions side by side? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, we'll, we'll get to that a little later, uh, but actually all you have to do is, let's use Intel as an example here. I know we don't have a future symbol up, but Let's pretend this is showing the regular trading hours. Um, and this one could show the extended by right-clicking the chart and selecting show extended data. So this will show the extended session and this one will show the RTH. But we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Okay, and we have a question here from Irfan. Irfan, Irfan. I apologize if I said your name incorrectly. Uh, does a new stock symbol always have to be searched to create a chart or is there a shortcut available for stocks? Um, um, we, well, we find it's best to use, if, if it doesn't exist in your workspace, if the instrument is already in your workspace, then you're good to go just by typing it up in the corner here. Like we can, we know Amazon's in our, in our um, instruments list already. So we can just do that. The reason being, is that a lot of connections have many different uh, exchanges available. Like we showed you in the Tesla example, if we search for Tesla, um, it's gonna come up with a bunch of uh, different options for you and you'll wanna be able to select the correct exchange. So we don't currently have an easy way to set the exchange and just go from there. So that's why it's best to just use the, uh, the magnifying glass search. Yeah, and once that's, once you select that specific uh, symbol and it's in the instrument list, you no longer have to search for it. You can simply just type the symbol in the uh, symbol box, the upper left, yep. and it automatically start popping up. Okay. Um, here's a question from Amit. Please uh, discuss how to code custom indicators. So we do have a Java SDK, which will allow you to create custom studies and strategies. Um, if you go over to our website, and if you go to motorwave.com, and you take a look at, I'm just bringing it up here. Where do we just have it up online, or yeah, on chair. it would be under the help menu. So if you go to motorwave.com, go under help. There is a item there in the menu labeled software development kit SDK. You can click on there for more information. And the source code for our studies and strategies is also available on our forum. And you can access the forum from that help menu as well. It's the second uh, item in the dropdown under, under the help menu, under user forum. 
Okay, that's that question. Um, Basil has a question here. Is there a way to log off another computer that has motive wave open, um, but has been frozen for some reason? So did you want to answer this one, Jason? Uh, you no, you go it? ahead, Joe. All right. So you can install motive wave on as many computers as you like, but you can only run it on one computer at a time per license. So if you find yourself in a situation where uh, if your system crashes or you lose connection, or if you decide to use a VPN in the middle of a session, what will happen is the, uh, it may trigger an active session warning, which means you will not be able to restart motor wave uh, on, that, on the other computer. But what you can simply do is you can wait a few minutes for it to reset, or you can simply email us at support at motorwave.com and uh, we will uh, release that session for you, okay? Just, a, just another quick note on that. If you have an active session warning, make sure you make your email title really obvious um, to us so that, you know, if it says uh, reset active session or something like that, then it's very obvious we can see that go into that email and answer that question as soon as possible. Yep. Great, great point. Um, we have another question here. Is it possible to save charts as ping or JPEG? Um, I guess you can refer to the camera icon there. I think it's just a, uh, what do we have? I think it said it's a ping. Like, oh, uh, no, you could PNG probably save it. or GIF, yeah. Yeah. So that's how you can save a chart as an image. And see if I can grab one more. Is there a limit to the number of workspaces that can be created? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not aware of any limit. Neither have I. I've seen some people with 20, 30 workspaces. Um, haven't seen any limits there. Um, and on the topic of workspaces, can all workspaces be stored on iCloud? Well, they can't be saved on iCloud. That's an Apple product. Um, but you can, we do, MotorWave does have a cloud feature where the workspace, you have two options of either local disk or motor wave cloud as Jason is showing there. Um, and what'll happen is um, you can have up to three workspaces, cloud workspaces, and those are linked by your license key. So the best application for a cloud workspace is if you're using motor wave across multiple computers, once you log off one computer and decide, let's say to go on your laptop and you want to retrieve the analysis that you did or the work that you did on your desktop, um, you would then select the workspace, the cloud workspace, which will show up and be available on your laptop. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, that's it for now, Jason, maybe we can move okay. on. Yep, let's move on. All right, so the next section is untitled versus title analysis. So one feature of MotiveWave uh, that can cause confusion for new users is the analyses. Uh, there are two types of analyses, untitled and titled. By default, MotiveWave opens each new chart as an untitled analysis. So let's go ahead and check that out. You'll see the analysis is set to untitled here. Uh, so what this means is that all your drawings and studies on the chart will be discarded if you close the chart tab. So this function is the same as most other trading platforms. So I'll just show you a quick example. We have Amazon up here. If I add a study, let's go with the alligator study. And I close this chart and open up, open up a new Amazon chart, that alligator study is gone. Um, but if you don't close that chart, the analysis will still be there attached to that instrument. So let's do another, another test here. So we can go back, we're gonna add the alligator study again. And then we're gonna switch the chart symbol from Intel, or excuse me, to Intel, and then back to Amazon. And since we didn't close the chart tab, uh, that analysis is still there. 
Okay, so the other type of analysis is the title analysis, which as the name suggests is given a title or a name. And they are saved within the workspace. Even if you close the chart, they will still be available. Uh, they are tied to the instrument and you can create as many title analyses uh, for that instrument as you like. Titled analyses were created for Elliott Wave analysis, where you'd want to have multiple wave counts or hypotheses for each instrument. So you can create a title analysis by selecting the new analysis button here, or by going to the file, chart, new analysis. Um, you can also uh, save a new title analysis based on an untitled analysis chart. So to do this, you can click the Save As button here or go to File, Chart, Save As. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna call this one Alligator. And now you can see in brackets after the symbol is the analysis name. If you click this little folder icon, it's gonna give you more analysis op options. So you can see we have our Alligator, analysis enabled on this chart. We can create a new analysis and we can manage analysis. So the title analysis can be used uh, to show multiple charts with the same studies or drawings. So let me just do a quick example here. So I'm gonna do this Amazon chart um, and then I'm gonna throw another Amazon chart next to it. And all we do to get this alligator uh, title analysis on here, select the chart and then select the alligator analysis. And then we're gonna remove that untitled that was already there. We're gonna discard everything. And now these are using the same title analysis. And how this could be used is let's say you're on a one, ch one hour chart. Let me just delete the volume to get rid of that. Uh, one hour chart here and let's say a 15 minute chart there. Uh, what we could do is add say support and resistance lines. We could add, uh, you know, any component or we could just do a guide here uh, for maybe support there. We could add a guide there and you can see it'll show up on the lower time frame. We could also maybe add, you know, a support here. Obviously we want to color these lines, et cetera but you can see how using the title analysis would be beneficial. Uh, so that's the untitled and titled analysis. So let's move on to a few more bonus tips, which I think may be helpful to new users. So let's uh, get a new chart in untitled. We'll do a one day chart here. Actually, we're gonna go 15 minute. Um, so this ties into the question from the other user, which is the extended session. So if you'd like to view the extended session or the pre and post market data, uh, data in equities, what you do is you right click the chart and select show extended data. And that's gonna show the pre and post market trades. Um, if this data has not been downloaded from your connector, uh, it may not show up. So what you then need to do is right click the chart and select clear local data. Uh, so the clear local data function can be quite useful if you have chart issues. Uh, so what it will do is delete the local cache data on your hard drive and re-download it from your broker or data feed. If you see that your data uh, on your chart looks kind of funny, uh, this should be your first troubleshooting step, just clear local data. Uh, another common problem with the extended session uh, is not having an exchange assigned to your trading hours. So to find that out, right click the chart, go to edit instrument, and on your advanced tab, you're gonna see an exchange listed here. If there's nothing listed there, um, that would be why your extended hours aren't showing up. So. Uh, that hours there is what MotiveWave references for the symbols trading hours, which will include the regular and extended hours. So this needs to be set for these extended data toggle to work. Um, next tip is if you'd like to show a non-linear or, or bars like 
tick volume range Renko point and figure or possibly a second or millisecond based chart. Uh, you can do this by double clicking the chart background, which will bring up your chart settings. On the bar settings tab, uh, you can go down to the bar size and you can select any of your desired chart type uh, options like tick, range, Renko. So non-linear charts are only available on the order flow edition and higher. Also, your connection may not support historical tick data. So if this is the case, you wouldn't see proper looking nonlinear charts. So that's very important. Yeah, you need to make sure that your, um, your connection supports historical tick data. Uh, another tip is that you can zoom in and out on the chart by clicking and dragging over the time axis. So as you can see, I'm right over the time axis. If I click and drag, I can increase or decrease the bar width. Um, so I, uh, the bar width is set in pixels. Uh, you can check it by going back in your chart settings and check the bar width pixels. So we could drop this down to one pixel, for instance. And since we're on Google Yahoo, we have a limited amount of data, but if we switch to a daily chart, uh, we'd see a little more. Um, one other feature we have, uh, which may or may not be useful to some traders, is the zoom bar size. So what happens when you get down to a, a bar width of one pixel, if you go further than that, uh, it's just gonna double the bar size. So we go from one day to two days, from two days to four days, et cetera. Um, so what you can do to get back to your regular uh, bar width is just double click the time axis. And that will bring you back to a bar width of six pixels because that's my default. Um, and just to let you know, if you don't like that zoom bar width, you can go into configure preferences, chart, options, and disable this zoom bar size setting right here. Uh, for chart scaling, MotiveWave by default will open all charts in auto scale. Uh, what this does is automatically scale the chart so all bars are within view. As you can see, when I scroll back in the chart, it's constantly changing the chart scale uh, so that all bars are visible. In some cases, this might not be ideal. Uh, let's say you wanted to show a footprint chart uh, a volume chart or a TPO chart where you want to view numbers or letters. So for this type of scenario, you'd want to use price range scaling. To get into price range scaling, what you can do is either double click your chart, go into the scaling method and change it to price range. Or you can also just disable auto scale mode. And that will put you into price range where you can pan around the chart and then as you can see, we go back into the scaling uh, tab here and we can see that our price range in ticks is set to 91,522, which is because we're on Amazon, uh, it's a huge range. So we could set this to something like, you know, 3000 ticks. And then it's gonna be, you know, zoomed in, maybe not super useful or a very good example right now, um, but it would be useful if you were using say a TPO chart and you wanted to uh, show the letters. You can also uh, scale this, this chart by clicking and dragging on the price axis. So we can do this and this will actually change um, this number right here. So now our price range is at 35,000 uh, ticks. Um, also something to note is the ticks from edge setting. So this will make sure the last price uh, bar of the chart stays at least that many ticks away from the edge of the chart. So what this does is it ensures the last price doesn't go beyond your view. So if you're if the chart came up here and went beyond you know two ticks, what it would do is it would automatically bring the chart back into view. Um, if you don't want this you can enable, or excuse me, disable the ticks from edge setting, but this setting will automatically disable it itself once this last price bar is beyond the right extent of the chart. So I'll just show you an example here. This last price bar is now beyond the right extent of the chart. Uh, we can tell that from this little arrow here. So this is the go to 
go to most recent bar arrow. Um, and the reason we disable it for that is so that you could go back and look through previous days without MotiveWave automatically kicking you back. Um, so in order to go back to the most recent price bar, just click this little arrow here and we're back to where we wanna be and we can go back into auto scale. So the last tip I have for you today is to not let your computer go into sleep mode while you run MotiveWave. Uh, most operating systems by default will cut off your network connection. This could cause a whole host of issues. Uh, just with executions, with connection, uh, with memory. We just recommend turning off your monitor to save energy and then dis uh, disabling sleep mode on your computer. All right, so that concludes the presentation. Joe, do we have any questions left? Yeah, we have uh, quite a few questions. So being that we're running into an hour at the moment, what we'll do is we'll answer a few more and then um, I'll take a few minutes after to... Um, answer a few more. And any of you that have not had their questions answered, please feel free to contact us directly at support at motorwave.com. If you have any sales related questions, you can always reach sales at sales at motorwave.com. So let's grab a few more questions here. Um, why is it not recommended uh, to use the Google data feed? Uh, it's just... <laughs> pretty poor data, to be honest with you. Um, I don't even know the uh, how often updates come in there. And also, I don't know, Joe, if you want to touch on this, but neither of those are supported APIs. So the, no. the Google Finance API and the Yahoo Finance API are not supported. Yeah, uh, that's so correct. That, so we do not have documentation. If, if any of those APIs are updated, uh, we're not aware of the changes. So those connections could break at any moment. That's correct. They stopped supporting it years ago. So um, we do our best to keep it running. We've been doing a great job up to now. Um, as far as um, the quality of data, as far as does every symbol get live data, um, that's all gonna depend on the API. And again, it's not supported. So, um, you know, we really don't recommend it for a live trade scenario but it's great for, for demo purposes or even bringing some charts in, on some of the equities where the um, charts seem to be fine. Um, next question. Can, it, can MotorWave be connected with the uh, NSE exchange in India? So, uh, yeah. yeah. So we, we do have uh, specific connections that offer NSE. I think we actually have a, um, do we have Indian? Yeah, so we do. So we have interactive brokers can be used. Google Yahoo, which won't provide a lot of symbols, global data feeds, true data, meta stock, and then obviously a manual CSV import. Okay, we have a question here from Miguel. How do we create a spread chart? I guess we could do that through uh, a custom in, uh, custom instrument. Yeah. Uh, so this wouldn't be available on on all editions. Uh, if you have, uh, I believe this is professional and ultimate only. Um, you'll have the option to create a custom instrument uh, where you could create a spread here. So we could call it, you know, Apple. AMD, that's a dumb spread, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> select the trading hours, set the minimum tick, and then you select your, your symbols here to create the spread. Okay, um, we have another question here. Is it possible to create alerts on studies? Uh, yes, it is. So we could have a study here, and Joe, you can just touch on the, I believe it is, is it the professional ultimate for alerts on studies? Um, I think advanced alerts, professional and ultimate. Yeah. I'd right. have to check if that's required for the alert on studies, most likely is. Yeah. Uh, let me check that. So you could create an alert. Uh, price crosses this. You could add uh, EMA greater than or equal to this number, or you do EMA crossing another EMA. 
and set an alert that way. So study alerts, you would need advanced alerts, which is professional and ultimate editions only. Okay. Okay, what else we got? Um, how can we scroll up and down in the chart? We've covered that um, um, through scaling, turning the... Auto scale, turn auto yeah. scale off, and then you can pan yeah. where you like. And then if you want to get back to auto scale, just click the button again and you're back. How could we move the volume from popping up by default every time? Uh, that'll be in configure, preferences, chart, options. Uh, there should be a show volume somewhere. Yeah. Um, is it overlay volume? <laughs> it's in there. Um, try, try general. I think it's maybe overlay volume. Let's see. Try that. Uh, what's the chart that we didn't use today? Let's see. IBM, maybe. OK. I believe that's it. And you can also go to view. If you have view show volume off, I believe that should also turn it off. OK. Um... Next question, is there a way to set my charts to trade futures for TDA? Um, futures are not supported uh, at the moment through the TDA API. Um, so that you'd have to refer to any of our, of our other connections that support futures, such as Rhythmic, CQG, uh, IB, or any other broker that supports futures. Let's see if we can grab one more. Here's one, do you ever plan to have connections to any or all of these? E-Trade, Fidelity, Tasty Trade. As far as we know, those, uh, those three specific ones at the moment do not offer an API, so we cannot connect with them. Um, if there's a specific broker that you would like for us to take a look at and they do have an API, then reach out to us, support at motorwave.com. Um, send us a link to the broker, and then what we can do is put that in our future uh, request sheet. And if we have enough uh, demand for it, then it's something we uh, may consider implementing. Okay, um, again, for those asking about the recording, it'll be available in 48 hours. And um, I think that's it for now. Any questions that uh, have not been answered, uh, feel free again to reach out to us, support at motorwave.com. And what I'll do is I'll answer a few more here um, now that we conclude the uh, webinar. Okay. All okay. right, Jason, back to you. Yeah. Yeah, no, perfect. Uh, thanks, Joe. So yeah, I no just problem. Wanna, wanna mention that Motorwave has a 14 day risk-free trial. And I really do apologize uh, to the users that didn't get your questions answered. Just please email in uh, support at motorwave.com and we'll be able to answer your questions there. Uh, if you have any sales related questions, you can email sales at motivewave.com. So I just want to thank everybody who joined the webinar today. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to join us. And uh, yeah, have a great evening.